Hello everyone, so this is uh, Charles Clinton. Uh, so in this facet of life, I'm Dr. Charles Clinton. So why am I doing this video? Actually, my motivation is that I'm wrapping up today, January, let's see, January 28, 2022, uh, with my interview season. So actually, I'm in the midst of my last interview and actually I have like a one hour gap so I guess I already learned everything I need to learn in order for me to make this video giving you my two cents on how to prepare for interviews in the future I believe this is relatable for medicine mainly but this could help you out if you're in any different different area of life so I'll give you my two cents because I usually like sharing because they say sharing is caring and every little thing I am able to encounter in life and able to navigate in a positive manner I believe is enough of a reason to share with anyone that might actually improve or yeah add to their game plan based off of my experiences so I'll give you my two cents this is the starter starter pack for a good interview season so why are you here in front of the camera speaking with someone else who wants to know your story and wants to know um, if you are fit for the program for the job etc etc <clears throat> okay so you are here because someone has already seen through your application that you have what it takes to be working an X or Y job or preparing an X or Y specialty or whatever you are trying to apply to. So it, it's first a, a sign of being able or that you have already accomplished something. They're already taking you into account. So if they're already taking you into account, you have to feel good about yourself. So step number one is uh, feel good about, about yourself if you are having to turn on the camera or having to go physically somewhere to interview. It means you've done something well or something good. S point number two I want to make is that the interview isn't to see your attestations or isn't to see if you are able to uh, work in such and such place. The interview is to see if you're a human being or if you're a robot. So it wants to see your capacity with social skills, communication. It wants to see that you actually can it speak interact with people because even though your job doesn't have to deal with people even though you're gonna be for example a pathologist that will be seeing mostly dead people or you're someone who is who's gonna be in in something technologically related making scripts or anything they also want to see that you can interact when you are called or when you are asked something uh, in general, every job on earth needs good customer service or good skills of uh, yeah, inner communication. So this, that's step number two. That's the reason they are seeing you. The, the reason they are seeing you is that they want to see you are the real deal. They want to see that whatever is written down in your CV or application does in fact reflect what you are and the only way to do this is moving on to step number three which is being yourself so whatever is written in your application has to actually reflect who you are what you are and and where you are going you can't uh, add anything in your CV or application that doesn't represent your real ideals or anything that you haven't actually done so that's step number three because if you aren't yourself in the interview 
you probably won't get that job. So most of us uh, aren't able to lie, aren't good actors to start with. So if I were lying here in front of you today, my cheeks would get very red. I would, um, won't be able to maintain a straight face speaking to you. So you have to own your things. You have to own your, your story, right? Okay, so that's step number three, own your story. Step number four is get prepared for every possible scenario. So you have to be prepared for the questions you're gonna be thrown, right? So depending on what you're being asked or what you're applying to, you have to be prepared for it. Don't take anything personally, that's point number five. So if you're applying for a job and you have all these skills required and even more, you might even be overqualified. And the, the interviewer is asking you a simple question about the job and you feel it's a, a, stu a stupid question, don't manifest you are taking anything personally. Because if you manifest this, it means that you probably are lagging a little in social skills and maybe aren't fit for the job. So you can't take things personally. You show them what you're made of. If they ask you a simple question, answer that simple question with a smile on your face and don't try to force a smile. You have to, if you're here and they're asking you easy questions, appreciate the easy question. If, you, if they're asking you a tough question, it will make you think more. If it makes you think more, you're prob probably gonna learn from this experience, so tackle the question. If you are trying to improve in life and grow in life, you probably will appreciate even more those difficult questions that uh, put you in a place of, of not being sure, of insecurity. You have to get out of your comfort zone to actually grow, so be ready to tackle those questions as well. Another point that is important is don't have a script for everything. So this uh, video I'm making right now, I don't have a script for. I'm just talking about what I am thinking. I am just trying to flow. When you're in a state of flow, it's, it's something that has been recently uh, drawn light to or yeah because this has existed for decades and hundreds of years the state of flow but it's something that we usually see recent as of recently in social media and we see people flowing in every aspect of life and those are the videos that get uh, the most likes and most views if you see someone doing jiu-jitsu and they're in a state of flow it's something that that looks great if you see a soccer player that is in a state of flow, you'll see great goals. If you see a physician in a state of flow, you'll see hand, this person handling tough situations in a great manner with maturity, with objectiveness, etc., etc. So this point I want to make is try to flow. If you have a script and you're following a script and you have everything written down right here and you have post-its all over your computer you're playing to fail because if you get x question you'll look that way if you get such other question you'll look downwards if you get such other question that you don't have an answer for you'll just stay as a robot you're you'll become robotized you'll just uh, have um, insecurities that will build up on you so you have to flow, you have to try to flow, but you have to prepare. So I go back to the previous point, prepare enough so that you can flow. So if you have to answer a question and you have your own script, yeah, read it 10, 20 times. After you read it and practice it here in front of the computer or in front of your mirror or in front of a teddy bear or whatever you choose, you will actually make it grow on you to a certain extent that you will flow and you will be spontaneous or at least seem spontaneous. So if you have difficulties uh, socializing, try socializing, try working on your craft, work on your weaknesses, 
So be prepared as well for any difficulties you might encounter in your interview. For example, right now, the person who lives on top of, on top of our place is, is drilling holes on the, on the walls. I just interviewed, uh, I was just interviewed and this person just started drilling holes on the walls and I told my interviewer, I let them know, okay, this is something I cannot control. Please let me know if it is uh, interrupting the interview and if necessary, I can put on my uh, noise canceling headset. So I'm showing that I'm prepared. I'm showing that I... Um, I'm ready for any of the interruptions and variables that maybe hadn't been taken into account by someone who wasn't that prepared. So it's a positive. So be sure to demonstrate that you're prepared for this. Part of the preparation as well is your environment. So look at this. This is my interviewing environment. Everything is here for a reason. So if you see this right here, you'll see that I have uh, pictures that manifest what I'm made of. These are a uh, conversation starters in many different opportunities in my interviews. Actually, in my interview today, they asked me about my dogs. So I actually had the opportunity to show my, my dogs to uh, the person who was interviewing me. And it was a positive. So you have to know how to nav navigate uh, through your interview. For example, showing your pet dogs to someone in, an, in, in a moment that isn't appropriate will plainly make you look bad. But if the moment is right, you can actually add to your interview showing, your, showing that you are spontaneous and all. So this right here, when they ask me, tell me, Charles, what is one of your main achievements I have it right here so why not put it on the wall if it's one of my main achievements in my professional career Ch tell me Charles what are your hobbies you have them right here you can ask me about them this right here was just on the wall if you ask me about it I'll be I'll be honest and probably say it, it was just there and and it's okay I liked how it looks and I left it there someone might want to take this out of the way and just leave the this these other two um what's the name of things behind me but if you can talk about it you can make your case for example i didn't know that this uh, drawing was the charles um, bridge in where was this in prague so there you have charles bridge in Prague. I've never been there. I didn't know it was the Charles Bridge, but I could say it's the Charles Bridge and I'm named Charles, then it, it might be positive. It might even be seen negatively if I start or trying to look too narcissistic, right? So you have to know your personality traits and you have to bring everything to the middle because you know that you will be interviewing with someone that might be the first time you are seeing this person so if you're too narcissistic it might look good with someone who has similar personality traits if this other person is an introvert and doesn't like those that brag too ma much you probably won't do well with someone this type if you're on the narcissistic side so what I'm trying to mean is that you know everything in life is a balance so try to balance yourself and in general this is something that you learn with maturity and with experiences but i know that many applicants are very young and might not understand this balance till now in my case i already am 33 years old so it's something that life has taught me okay so what else um also yeah be ready to own your story that be, that so that point of owning your story will make you look natural so if you don't own your story and they ask you about hey charles tell me about what what are your publications i read here that you published a paper on such and such can you tell me a little about that if you didn't participate in that publication guess what you'll probably get read 
or if you are a good actor you won't get read but you'll try to make something up and you might be interviewed by two or three separate people these other people might ask you the same question and you might give them a different version because there is nothing more difficult to hide than a lie so when you lie you make the story more complex and it gets to a point that you will um, it will bite you in your ass right so be yourself own your story don't start uh, talking about things you haven't accomplished your story is uh, each of our stories is unique and the reason or you seeing me today means that you right there are a miracle because the possibilities of you being born are we're going down to very decimal a very small decimal digits so understand you're a miracle and that your story is unique and that no one will repeat your same story so you can say your story without a problem don't try to emulate what you're seeing right here if anything of here of uh, what you are seeing or hearing helps go for it if not so just uh, use whatever works for you okay what else appreciate every opportunity so in my case I got more than 10 interviews I went to each and every one of them I have to admit that my mind was made up after the seventh uh, interview probably around the seventh interview I said enough I probably don't need to interview anywhere else but I decided I would appreciate every opportunity so it doesn't need, mean I am just uh, wasting other, other people's time. I am appreciating their opportunity, what they gave me to listen to my story. And I am practicing on my way. There's always something to learn. That, that is the way we should approach life. Know that uh, you have always something to learn. So I have gone to my last interviews. Uh, just to share with people learn other things learn different cultures and and test myself and see if I am liked by others or not liked by others and see what I might be manifesting that uh, might be liked or disliked so yeah you have to take the advantage out of everything also uh, another point is that in many interviews which are actually the virtual interviews you'll be in a meeting room where there's other applicants these other people aren't your enemies they they might be competing with you but actually remember that the competition is within not without so if you're starting to compete with with others and you see that the this other person uh, made a great question and now you have to make a better question than he or she did you're, um, you're just looking for failure because remember that you have something to learn from everyone and that life is a merry-go-round. So even these applicants could eventually be your boss at some point in time or they might need your help. So I always in every interview try to make it a great place for everyone. I try to wrap it up saying good luck uh, for everyone in their interviews hope everyone uh, gets the option of their dreams etc etc and i really mean it so if you really mean it say it and um, so those are the main pointers i have for you guys i believe that after more than 10 interviews i already have the capacity to help you out with some good pointers um, if you want to prepare even more I would recommend some pages if you are a medical resident match a resident is a great page that will help you uh, grow confidence and be able to thrive in your interviews so depending on the area of life you're working in uh, search the tools necessary for you to feel great and be the best version you can if you are seeing this video you probably are interviewing or have interviewed for some place so congratulations 
And I think I've talked more than enough. Um, if you liked the video, give it a, a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. Actually, I, I prefer honesty over uh, any social makeup. So that's it for this video. Hope the best. Let me know in the comment section how you did in your interviews. If you matched, if you didn't match, tell me if you have any questions. Tell me I'm here to help you guys in, the, in, in your journey. So yeah, cheers. Sorry for the mouse going up right there.